Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, known as ADHD, affects roughly 5% of children in Taiwan. Government data shows that only about half of affected children ever receive medical treatment. Specialists say many parents are reluctant to seek professional help. Many worry that a diagnosis will label their child as a bad kid. Experts say that children with ADHD can learn to live and to thrive with a condition, but that success often comes down to the choices their parents make. Our Sunday special report. As classes let out at the elementary school, Mr. Wu is there at the school gate, ready to pick up his son, fourth grader Xiao Xian. The two are off to play at the Child Development Center. Before Xiao Xian had started elementary school, his mother realized he had trouble controlling his emotions. Normally, when a child has temper tantrum, you can manage it, you can talk them down, but him, he doesn't hear you at all. This youngster is named Xiao Chen. With age and socialization, he began to display behaviors that were increasingly erratic. His mother remembers his first day of kindergarten. After less than a day, his teacher called her and asked that she pick him up. Xiao Chen had completely ignored the teacher's instructions. Every time he was led into the classroom, he would scream. It was as if he were a wild animal that couldn't understand speech. They asked me to take him away. I felt a pang in my heart. When we left, I was crying. I was wondering how could he be like this, rejected after just half a day. What are we to do in the future? After hospital visits and consultations with a pediatric psychiatrist, Xiao Chen and Xiao Xian's parents came to realize that their children had ADHD. It was not that their children were intrinsically combative, but rather that their brains were developing at a slower rate. Our frontal lobe is this area right here. It's like our general headquarters. It's responsible for helping us think before we act. For example, my brain may tell me, this is very hot, don't touch it. And then you react, okay, I won't touch it. However, children with ADHD will just reach out and touch it because they can't control themselves. Occupational therapy for children is an early intervention that can help. Through activities, environmental design, and assistive tools, the therapy helps children improve various abilities. Children with ADHD are more excitable and impulsive. They struggle to focus when listening to others. Even when they're settled down with a game, they tend to skip lines, miss words, or do other careless things. When they play games with others, disputes emerge and emotions arise. So our occupational therapists use goal-oriented games and activities to train kids with ADHD to control their emotions. Occupation therapist Liu Zhongyi works with children with ADHD every day. To him, children with ADHD are uniquely gifted. We might find a child with ADHD to be hyperactive and careless, but we'd also find him to be very vibrant, very passionate, and unafraid of strangers. He can chat with anyone. Those are very wonderful and positive qualities. Liu's own daughter has ADHD. Even before she turned two, he had realized that her language skills were advanced, but she had a hard time sitting still or being quiet. She often ended up getting herself hurt. I'm not a particularly anxious person myself, but I know that a lot of parents get very scared. They go to school and the teacher tells them their kid is mischievous and unruly and asks them if the kid has ADHD. These moms and dads worry about their kid being misunderstood and stigmatized. In Taiwan, there is a very serious stigma surrounding mental illness. Unfortunately for children with ADHD, this disorder falls under the Department of Psychiatry. It is treated by child psychiatrists. So it's really easy for children with ADHD to become stigmatized. Previously a psychiatrist himself, Department of Mental and Oral Health Director General Chen Li Zhong helped establish an ADHD screening program at primary schools in 2014. To his surprise, the program came under heavy fire. 
after less than one year, it was brought to an end. The project really came about because the rate of children getting professional help for ADHD was too low. We thought that this do-it-yourself screening program would help parents catch problems early and seek treatment for the children. In 2014, the Ministry of Health and Welfare commissioned psychiatry professor Susan Gao to research the mental health of adolescents nationwide. She discovered that 5 to 7 percent of Taiwanese youth suffer from ADHD. However, less than half these families seek treatment. Early diagnosis does not mean early medication. Actually, with regard to medication, what we typically recommend is waiting until after first or second grade and then re-evaluating the situation. Before that point, the main order of business is for parents to learn how to support their children. Yao Yuanxian, a counselor, has converted this therapy room into a game room. What goes on here is different from the usual physical exercises of occupational therapy. Here in this quiet space, puzzles and board games are used to help children with ADHD improve their concentration. We only see the child once a week for an hour at a time. The benefit of that is limited. But at home, parents see their kids seven days a week. If parents can come to understand what their child needs and find more time to spend together, the child can make much bigger gains. Early treatment isn't about changing the child. It isn't about bringing children to the center and dumping them on the teacher, with the idea that the teacher will guide them and then everything will be fine. What is most important is that parents, just like the teacher, know what to do when encountering a child like this. In the eyes of specialists, treating ADHD does not come down to any one method. Rather, it's about recognizing the uniqueness of each and every child and tailoring treatment to best help them. And in the end, it's often the loving support of their parents and the understanding of their peers that help them the most.